thing is, when it comes to convertibles, there's some quite specific rules. Uh, if there isn't actually water falling out of the sky, then the roof's off. That's basically it. That's pretty much the only rule. So by default, uh, you are mandated, required, to have the roof off at every possible given opportunity. Thank you very much. So that's what we do. So, where am I going today? What exciting adventure have we got in the, in the diary, on the cards, in the card diary? Well, we're off to see Richard from Wizard Sports and Classic. So, gonna go and have a little chat, see what he's got in stock. So if you've lost track and can't remember the car, this is the C70 that I bought uh, last weekend. I paid a thousand pounds for it and it was fairly local. I haven't really done anything with it since, which is why I'm quite looking forward to going on this little run. Straight away, I'm noticing that it hasn't got heated seats. It's 11 degrees outside and uh, I'm gonna feel that in a little bit. When you drive convertibles in cold weather, you really notice when you're driving a four-seat convertible over and above a little roadster, something like a little MGF or a Z3, it's dead easy to keep the cabin warm because there's nothing behind you. But when you've got an expansive rear seat, it's much harder to keep the back warm. So much better to have some heated seats. But I've gone for a, uh, I've gone for a triple layer approach. We've got a t-shirt, we've got a nice sticker. It's called a shacket, this actually, from Joe Brown's. It's the Joe Brown shacket both a shirt and a jacket and then uh, I've got this little fleecy hoodie on top as well now these are tried and tested items of clothing for uh, winter convertible driving I've done this many times before so we should be fine obviously I'm doing this uh, having just recovering from being ill so two hours up the motorway in a convertible in the rain is exactly what my immune system needs come on immune system man up and deal with it Coffee look, frankly, services. It's a crap service station, this. Best looking car in the car park, though. Right, I've driven up, driving the roof off. Because this is like me on my day off. This isn't like some endurance thing. I'm not trying to get to the South Pole. I know I said what the rules were, but uh, whatever. I don't want to make myself ill. And I'm basically sitting on the M5 and the M6 today. Sadly, I'm not on an interesting journey. I'm just driving up Stockport. I'm just outside Stockport. Right, accelerating onto the motorway. What's it like? Um, it's not that exciting, to be honest until you get to all the revs and then it pulls and pulls and pulls. I mean, that's third gear and I'm already doing over and above the speed limit and I feel like it would keep going. But I wouldn't mind a little bit of that like more usable power, slightly lower down in the rev range. Um, but it's lovely. It's uh, very, very comfortable. A very comfy car. Some of the best seats ever. I've got a little cup holder here for my coffee. Um, it's just a lovely motorway cruiser. Sometimes I'm overcome by every choice I couldn't outrun. The junctions all disappear. You can't double back to your summer years. I look very small in this car, don't I? Is it the way I've mounted the camera, or am I just really small? Don't you think? Normally when I film, I take up more of the screen. Maybe it's the way I've mounted the camera. Maybe it's the windscreen. Maybe I'm just small today. I mean, I know I haven't been feeling very well. Not that I've mentioned it, uh, but I wasn't aware that I'd shrunk. Right, now we've just got to do the boring bit where the M5 turns into the M6 and then everybody queues and then you've got to drive through basically 
no scenery. There's no scenery in this video because there's no scenery between just south of Birmingham and just south of Manchester. It's just nothing, it's just rubbish. You've got to get north of Manchester for it to get pretty again. Check this out, this is pretty funny. I'm currently doing 70, 80 miles an hour and I'm being tailgated. Who am I being tailgated by? Is it a man in a lab? Oh, he's flashing me. He's flashing me to get out of the way. I'm doing 70 mile an hour. Is it a man in a Lamborghini? Is it a man in a BMW X5? Let's pull over and see who we're being tailgated by. Because I'm pretty confident, mate. You're not even meant to be in the fast lane. You actual wanker. And I wonder where you are tonight. similar colour to this one. It's not as nice as this though, is it? They don't paint modern cars, right? I think it's to do with the way the cars are built, what the panels are made of. The paint never has the same level of shine as an older car. It's just better quality steel, isn't it, in the old days, and less plastic. ML430. Interestingly, the, uh, well, probably not interestingly, but the guy I had my Volvo 850T5 from was only selling it because he had three massive dogs and they were a bit too big for the Volvo. So he went and bought a uh, Mercedes ML430 instead. There's an interesting anecdote. about this car it's a 20 year old 22 year old 133,000 mile car with a soft roof it should feel terrible it should feel like it's falling apart it should feel like it's on its last legs but it just feels wonderful it feels very well put together it feels solid it feels sturdy it feels stable the roof isn't billowing I haven't got loads and loads of road noise well not more than you'd expect from a cheap convertible anyway and it was a thousand pounds. It's a ludicrous amount of car for the money and everything seems to work. It's just been so thoroughly pleasant despite the fact that the weather's terrible and I'm not on a particularly interesting drive. It's just lovely. People pay hundreds of pounds a month to lease cars because they're scared of buying old cars or they don't want to buy old cars or they think that for some reason because old cars are slightly less economical and slightly more expensive to tax. They think that it makes more financial sense to go and pay £300 a month to lease a newer car. But that doesn't make sense. Yeah, fair enough, you might pay £26, £28 a month to tax this car. Um, and it probably only does, you know, if you're careful, 35 miles to the gallon. But it's £1,000 to buy. You can insure it on a classic car insurance policy. And it's beautiful in every way, inside and out. A thousand pounds, that's like four lease payments. And you have to make 12 of those in a year. And you usually have to do that for three years. Do the maths. The bangonomics of cars like this just makes so much sense.
just as well.